All right, standing here with Alexander Osterwalder, one of the greatest thought leaders within business model innovation, right? You have been to Innodate today, talking about business model innovation, but you also, I see, because I follow you for a while, it seems like you're moving into more to, to culture and maybe more into like more pure innovation and maybe also into transformation. <coughs> is, that some, is that something obvious for you or is it something uh, that you do like on, on purpose, deliberately or mm -hmm. is it just... It's very um, simple. Yeah. Look, we address one challenge after the other in innovation yeah. and when we still don't see large companies transforming, we ask ourselves why and yeah. we address the next challenge. Yeah. So in innovation today, um, the real challenge is not the tools, not the process, we know how that yeah. works, but it's the organizational culture and the organizational structure. Yeah. So innovation is not happening at a large scale yeah. because companies are set up the wrong way. Yeah. So we just always try to solve the next problem yeah. until we get companies to yeah. systematically innovate. It's as simple as that. All right. So you have experienced that, that people are actually the center for everything and that's why you moved into that area more. Sure, more. yeah. yeah. Um, I think, well, people, yes, but mm -hmm. there's not a lack of innovative mm -hmm. people in companies. Mm -hmm. There's not a lack of ideas. Yeah. They're everywhere. Yeah. It's the wrong processes, the wrong ways to measure people in innovation. Yeah. So we measure innovators the same way we measure execution projects. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, it's the people, but it's actually the processes and the yeah. metrics around them. Yeah. So we don't unleash the talent. Yeah. It's almost as companies, they hire the best talent and then they put them in a straitjacket. Yeah. So it makes no sense. Yeah. So you want to create the right structures for innovators to, to uh, flourish. Yeah. We work a lot with trying to find the right balance between today's business and tomorrow's business. And you were talking a lot about ambidextrous organizations sure, yeah. and you had this new model, which I kind of, I think it was about the same like as ambidextrous, uh, like T's mm -hmm. research kind of. And you were talking about two types of CEOs, more or less. You had the yeah. chief executive yeah. officer and you have yeah. the chief entrepreneurial. Chief entrepreneur. yeah. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. I thought that was really interesting. <laughs> so, I believe innovation lacks power, Yeah. so we need a job title at the same level as the CEO. So I like to call that the chief entrepreneur, Yeah. somebody who invents the future. Yeah. And once the projects are big enough, they make a couple of million or dozens of millions of revenue, yeah. they actually should go into the execution engine. They should yeah. become the job of the CEO. Yeah. So the chief entrepreneur invents the future. And why a separate job title? Because that's a profession on its own. Yeah. Is, you know, management and innovation are two different professions. Yeah. So we always think, oh, because it's business, it's business. Yeah. No, innovation and entrepreneurship yeah. is a different planet than yeah. execution and management. Yeah. So it's not because you're good at one, you're good at the other. Yeah. And it's also to do with experience. Yeah. You don't become a great innovator or entrepreneur overnight. It's yeah. not creative genius. It's Trying it, yeah. doing it, changing it, learning it, you yeah. learn over time. Yeah. Nobody, none of those successful innovators on the cover of the magazine yeah. came up with it overnight. What yeah. we don't see is the long trail of failure that led to them building the experience. Right. Last question. You obviously wrote like a huge bestseller, Business Model Generation, and that has moved into almost like an ecosystem, a strategizer ecosystem. How is yeah. your own business model <laughs> growing? So we have a very clear vision of where yeah. the world is going in these tools. I believe, you know, what SAP did to uh, operations, yeah. we want to do to strategy and innovation. All right. Create the tools that can support, you know, and automate yeah. some of this. Because it can't be that we're still, you know, just doing PowerPoint presentation and Excel spreadsheets when it comes to innovation. We need yeah. to manage this process. Yeah. And software can help with that. Yeah. So that's what we focus on. That's the longer term vision. And a big part of now is just helping companies learn these skills at scale. So we do it with online coaching and training. Yeah. So people can roll out these skills yeah. over uh, over large companies like uh, Bayer, Mastercard. Yeah. So cool. we try to bring those skills Love into it. companies at scale. So lastly, you have a new book coming, right? Yeah, yeah. Was yeah. it in January? Or was that January next yeah. year? The Invincible Company. Yeah. The invin must have if you want to be ahead of everybody else. Yeah. And if you want to know more about the book, and if you want to read more about it, where do you go? Go to the Strategizer blog, right. blog.strategizer.com, and you can get a lot of it for free. We're going right. to you know, hand out stuff. We have a tradition of doing that cool. um, before the book comes out in January next All year. Right. Thank you very much. Take Great. care. Bye. My pleasure.